All right, folks, we got another one for you. It's August 15th, 2023. And in today's video right here, we're going to be talking about banks getting bailed out by XRP. That's right. I'm going to break this situation down. We're going to talk about first the problem, the reaction, the solution, another order out of chaos, historical event and reset that we are now undergoing, the problem that the banks have, and how I think XRP might be part of addressing it. A little bit of speculation, of course, but we're here to have some fun. And we're also here to find where the rubber meets the road. And we do have a lot to acknowledge as far as the progress that Ripple has been making, uh, the connections that Ripple has to the Federal Reserve now, to our government and multiple agencies, um, multiple departments within our government. And then we've also tapped into Wall Street's finest to basically create the all-star team of crypto. That's what Ripple is. And we've been talking about how many of these crypto projects can't even get anybody legitimate, any bank institution or government to pick up the phone. Ripple is actually getting former government employees, former top Wall Street executives to come join their team. And then after they're done with Ripple, like Michael S. Barr, he was the board of advisors for Ripple. Then he goes to chair and be on the Federal Reserve. And he was literally in charge of supervising the collapse of the banks this March. So the ties run deep. We're going to break it down in today's video. I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in. And if you appreciate our content, make sure you smash that thumbs up. But regardless, please just tell me how you feel. If you want to smash that thumbs up, we appreciate that. If you want to leave a thumbs down, that's fine. Drop a comment down below and tell me why you love it, why you hate it. Uh, the Twitter thought police, the, the YouTube police are going to come out and say that I've dropped too much content today. Third video on the day. Oh no, I should have ran this by the, the Twitter talking heads. But without further ado, let's get right on into it, guys. So the market was back down today off the news that uh, all Bitcoin ETFs are going to be uh, put off and delayed until next year. Not so good for the crypto space back down 1.2% today. Total market cap at 1.16 trillion. Bitcoin did go down 29,187 at the time of this recording, which is 530 on the West Coast evening time. 1,827 for Ethereum and XRP down to 60 cents. XRP actually wicked to about 58 cents, 589, you don't say. And uh, Bitcoin did go down here to 29,061. This is on your Qcoin four hour chart. And we were watching this thing chopping sideways here for the past week, finally getting some volatility coming in. And the news was not good for Bitcoin, but it is much worse for those in the traditional banking system. Let's get right on into it. Now, we're not talking about Steve Harvey. Um, we are going to be talking about Fitch saying that they may need to downgrade multiple banks, including JP Morgan. Now, recall, we just had the United States get downgraded from AAA to AA+. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's hilarious to see them, you know, downgrade the United States the mainstream media finally having to acknowledge that this situation, you know, isn't fantastic. It's not going smoothly. And uh, Fitch saying that it may need to downgrade multiple banks. I have some other jokes that I want to throw out there about Biden and a few other things. Biden being at the beach and his press secretary was trying to tweet for him today. Uh, she tweeted from the wrong account. She tweeted from her account, not from the official Biden account. But I'm going to try to keep all my jokes and disses uh, <laughs> aside. And we're going to try to stick to the topic, which is the banks here potentially getting downgraded. And that would include JP Morgan. So Fitch is saying that they're going to be taking a look at potentially downgrading the credit rating of the biggest banks here in the U.S. Now, as I said, we're going to talk about how big is this problem. It's absolutely massive. We've been talking about the unrealized losses on their books, which as of the, the end of last year, 2022, which was the worst year on record for bonds, U.S. banks have $620 billion of unrealized losses on their books. Now, we scroll on down here, and I had a note that was highlighted. Meanwhile, the value of banks' bond holdings plunged on paper, too. The $620 billion of unrealized losses in the system at the end of 2022 were for available for sale and held to maturity securities. The combination of surging interest rates, high investment losses, and heavy deposit outflows is new for most investors and executives in the banking industry. Now, the big banks actually you know, took advantage 
of the banking crisis of the small and regional banks in March, and they actually saw net positive inflows of deposits coming into the big banks. So that has helped them out since this article was written in March of 2023. But at the end of last year, they were sitting on over 600 billion of unrealized losses. Now, understand that the rates have increased. They've actually gone up since. So the losses are even worse. And then when you look at where we're at, you know, it's not only the bonds that they have on their balance sheet. You got to go look at all the commercial real estate that they have on their balance sheet, which is 1.9 trillion of commercial real estate loans. 1.5 trillion of that, nearly three quarters of that is due to be renewed by 2025. And then most of these bonds, T-bills and notes are actually due to be renewed by 2025 as well, 75% of them. So all of these loans to commercial real estate, all of these bonds set to expire here at a time when the rates have gone up dramatically, all has to be reset and redone by 2025. So this is an incredibly big problem, but then let's go look at the corporate debt, okay? In the first seven months of 2023, the US has seen an alarming 402 corporate bankruptcies. This is more than the entire 2022 total of 373. So in the first seven months of 2022, the US saw just 205 bankruptcies. In other words, bankruptcies this year are up 96% compared to 2022. Can the Fed really avoid recession? Now, what we've had to see here is a complete backstop of the banking system through the FDIC in tandem with the Fed. And when you look at what the Fed did with their balance sheet over the last two years, Pandora's box got opened up with the events of March 2020. And this is when the Fed started to take on uh, a large amount of mortgage-backed securities and a large amount of corporate debt. And the, the lending facilities that were opened up for Main Street and for corporate debt buying back uh, of the Fed really kept things propped up and really kept things afloat. Now, they've pulled the rug and there's no more PPP money. Uh, there's, uh, you know, no more programs, no more stimulus, even though Biden is trying to, you know, write off some student loan debt. Still, he is trying to give $700 per household to Maui victims who have been displaced. That's a side point. I'm not going to get into it any further than that. But I just bring this up to acknowledge how bad the problem is on the balance sheet of these banks. Okay. Now, we're, we're entering the beginning of a recession, according to the Main Street pundits. Now, we've already been calling the recession uh, as of last year, 2022. We entered a technical recession. Main Street didn't want to admit it. Financial media didn't want to admit it. That's fine. We know it was a recession. We know we're going into a, a much worse recession. It's going to get worse from here on out. And when we look at the data, when we look at the balance sheets that they hold now, you're talking about trillions of toxic debt just on their balance sheet between corporate debt, commercial real estate, and then uh, the bonds that they hold on their balance sheets as well. This well into the trillions. Now, don't get me started on the tens of trillions and the hundreds of trillions and even quadrillions of toxic derivatives on their balance sheets as well. We don't even know how bad this problem could be because of the toxic derivatives, which is a shadow asset class. Okay, so I, I provide that context to then talk about the reaction, which was the banking crisis that hit in March. Small and regional banks are continuing to flop. We just had another one. What was that out of Kansas or Kentucky? Another regional bank that folded just two weeks ago. So the banking crisis is still underway and we're starting to get that reaction. Now we got to come in with a solution. And so in this next post, I'm going to show you guys what could potentially be the solution. Now, in this morning's video where we talked about the Amazon Ripple speculation, we showed a little riddle, a little decode, a little, a little message from someone. Take it for what you want. And I'm about to show you another one, right? And, and this is a, a post here. Ian Benz put this together, Back to the Future 2. And we're looking at some posts here from Tony Valentino, okay? Let's look at these posts right here. Whoever he is, whoever Riddler he is, whatever Anon account this is, take it for what it's worth. If you want to just think that this has no value, that's fine, okay? I'm just going to cover whoever this entity was that put this speculation into our reality as we know it. Let's just read through it. 
Tony Valentino says, and, and, and we relate this back to the context that I just provided you guys to start this video. They are ready. Everything has been set up. Major banking and payment software providers all integrated. XRP bailouts have been distributed over the counter. This all comes down to a flip of the switch moment. It's all about timing. There's no rush right now. They need a little pain and panic first. End of Q3 and all of Q4 will be the most intense and exciting months. The global economy crashes. Britain leaves the EU. Global panic. Now, this is a few years old, right? This is from August 19. And it's funny because you go back to the Kendra Hill post of this morning and many of these posts, they were talking about the timing of these events taking place in 2019 into 2020, which many things were underway, right? We know many things were underway through the Trump administration, but then we know what happened in 2020, right? The events and simulations of 2020, Pandora's box was opened up, and then we had the election of 2020, which <laughs> uh, we better not go into that. That's all still being exposed here three and a half years later in 2023. Are we even going to have an election 2024? I dare not digress into that topic. Let's stay focused on the Phoenix XRP, as predicted by the 1988 Economist magazine, will rise to save the day. Instant bailouts and liquidity to reboot the system. Now, this is where, <laughs> folks, I don't, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just reading this post here from Tony Valentino. The UN will take over. They will give the backing for XRP to be the world currency. IMF will take control of the XRP escrows, new world order, world government, centralized laws from the UN. IMF is the central bank of central banks to dictate global monetary policy. Now, what's funny about this is the Central Bank of Central Banks is actually the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, which funny enough, the BIS just asked Ripple to join their task force for cross-border payments interoperability. And that was just this year, just here recently within the last couple of weeks, right? And, uh, you know, he's retweeting this post here from Zero Hedge. After Trump leaves France, Macron warns world is living the end of Western hegemony. Now, what we're seeing with the BRICS and everything that's occurring over there as well, right now we have the BRICS Summit coming up August 22nd through the 24th. This is all happening in real time. Did it happen in 2019 according to this Tony Valentino timeline? Not exactly, but we focus not on the dates, we focus on the events. And he says, because they can do whatever the F they want. If XRP was insignificant or some flop, or wasn't going to be worth anything, then their over-the-counter sales would be close to zero. XRP is being used as bailout. Important banks and companies have received these bailouts and just awaiting value. Now, as I mentioned earlier in today's video that we did Amazon Ripple speculation, I, I noted that we cannot deny that some deals have been done. I don't need to get into it. You already know the R3 deal. 5 billion XRP option. That deal did not go all the way through and they ended up settling in court for a 1 billion XRP settlement. So R3 was able to come into 1 billy XRP. That's just one institution. How many more have been in the shadows that have already done these over-the-counter deals, which Judge Torres is ruling are investment contracts, which are securities offerings, which Ripple may be in trouble for, they may have to pay a little slap on the wrist fine to good guy Gary Gensler as we wrap up and conclude this, this act on the world stage. We cut a nice little check to Gary, we proceed with our business, and all of the big banks have gotten their bailout of XRP behind the scenes. Now, you think I'm crazy, right? And you ask, how deep do these ties and connections go? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. Now, you guys have seen this, and this is what we're looking at. Uh, you know, and this is coming off of a post here from Digital Asset Investor. The schedule of Gary Gensler got released, and this was back in March when the banks were collapsing. And DAI says, I think Gary met with Michael Barr almost 10 times in March. Let's add it to our red file. And you guys know that we got a red folder too, right? Now we look at this. 
Ripple appoints former treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios, to the board of directors and Christina Campbell as CFO. Then we get the most powerful women in banking. Number six, JP Morgan Chase's Sandy O'Connor comes to join the board of directors at Ripple. Then Michael Barr joins. Ex-Ripple advisor joins the Fed. Next, we move over to president of BlackRock Digital Assets, former Ripple executive. So he leaves Ripple to go join president of BlackRock Digital Assets. Next, we move on over to the former CEO of the DTCC, Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, joins Ripple Labs as advisor. These are some of the biggest hitters in the financial world and within our government. The trillion dollar woman, Rosie Rios, the number six most powerful woman in finance, JP Morgan's Sandy O'Connor, just to name a few, right? This, this is just the first, the starting lineup of this all-star team. This isn't even getting to Brad and, and the level of executive that he is. This isn't getting to David Schwartz, chief cryptographer, one of the best cryptographers in the world, former NSA, you know? This, this, this roster goes deep. The ties go as, as far as the eye can see to every single entity that matters. And when you look at 15 executives from JP Morgan going to the executives, uh, going to the offices of Ripple, the, the deals have been done, right? The presentations have been made. And as Monica Long just told us after this positive ruling from Judge Torres on XRP, the conversations with U.S. banks and institutions have fired back up. And I, I've been saying the whole time here, they've already been had, they've already been going on, and now they're just getting finalized. Now the veil's being lifted for all to see. Now, we look at what is currently happening here with some of these guys. The Fed's vice chair for supervision suggests big bank regulation changes. In a series of changes that has bank lobbyists on the defensive, Michael Barr is calling for higher bank capital and tougher annual stress tests. Federal Reserve Vice Chair for Supervision announced on Monday that he would be pushing for significant changes to how America's largest banks were overseen in a bid to make them more resilient in times of trouble, partly by ratcheting up how capital, how much capital they have to get them through a rough patch. So we have, you know, former Board of Advisors from Ripple, Michael Barr, joins the Fed. He's tasked with supervising over the collapse of the banks. And now he's also rolling out and pushing for significant changes to how these banks are going to be overseen and operating for future crises. Now, one would speculate, one would assume that they might have seen some of this coming, right? One would assume that these folks are not that stupid, that they didn't see this coming from a mile away, from years away, years in the making, decades in the making, right? And funny enough, we get all of these events, we get this shakeup in the markets here today, and BC Backer shares this, that XRP hits 58 cents at the exact same time it hits the 200 week moving average on that XRP Bitcoin pair. So while the rest of the uh, while the rest of the crypto space is still clouded with uncertainty, no clarity, Operation Choke Point, Gary Gensler running these guys down, Sam Bankman freed about the snitch on the whole space, all the Bitcoin ETFs putting being put off till next year. We have all the chess pieces perfectly put in place when it comes to Ripple, when it comes to former Ripple advisors and executives being in positions of power at top Wall Street firms, at our government, at the Fed. And then we have this little precious cryptocurrency XRP getting clarity as, as, as far as not being a security. And we know of some deals that have been done. We speculate on further deals to be announced. And I just asked the question, is XRP going to be part of the bailout for the banks, i.e., have the banks already cut deals with Ripple to acquire large amounts of XRP on their balance sheets, and they are going to assume that uh, that price appreciation that is going to be coming for the asset to offset, to help them adjust, just like Michael S. Barr is working on right now, on helping them ride out these turbulent times uh, you know, that we saw affect all of the banking system 
the big banks benefiting from this as they see the deposit inflows, as we, they see their com, you know their competitors, the small regional banks collapse, and the whole banking system get consolidated, right? And so when we look at this situation, we also tie back in and we recognize that central banks are hoarding, stacking more gold than they have in 50 years. We also know that countries like China are dropping their U.S. bonds and they're now you know, holding as many bonds as they were back in 2009. They've dumped as many bonds that takes them back to a level that was last seen in 2009 during the last great financial crisis. So the banks and the governments around the world are dropping U.S. You know, US bonds, and it's a major problem for U.S. banks holding $600 billion of unrealized losses on their bonds, noted. Okay, And then we see that they're stacking more gold than they have in 50 years, which funny enough, uh, today we celebrate the 52-year anniversary of Nixon taking us off the gold standard. Okay, that's noted. And then we add in the fact that out of all of the companies in the cryptocurrency space, they're not acknowledging 99% of them. And Brad says that 99% are going to go away, but they are speaking with Ripple the most. We now know of five uh, central banks and government projects that have been announced with Ripple XRP. We know of five that are unannounced, and we know that conversations are taking place with 20 plus central banks and governments around the world when it comes to using Ripple's private CBDC solution. Okay, so we we note those three points, right? That there's a significant problem with the bonds and that's not going away. The Fed's not going to be cutting the rates anytime soon. Now, they know, they are going to be pivoting probably into next year, but are they going to be cutting rates to bring it back down to levels that we saw when these banks picked up all these bonds at these low rates, right? At 2%, 2%. 2 and 3% now your your yield on these bonds the 5 year in Canada's back up to about 4% and we're seeing the same thing here in the United States this is a serious problem not going away but are they 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 are acknowledging the problem but what are they doing as and as an additional solution they're stacking more gold than they have in 50 years they're talking with this little company this little startup out of San Francisco called Ripple and they are acquiring XRP over-the-counter back-end options contracts like we saw with R3 for billions of XRP. Many more deals are waiting to be announced, and I speculate that much of the escrow that Ripple is sitting on has been accounted for, at least a chunk of it, right? Has all of it been accounted for? Is all of it going to go to the IMF and the UN? I don't know if we'll see that happen, and I hope that that's not what has happened, right? I, I really do. But we understand that there is a currency war underway, a debt and a currency crisis underway, and we find that there is only a couple solutions to these problems. Gold, silver, backing currencies by real commodities, and neutral bridge currencies like XRP. So with that being said, you guys let me know in the comments down below. Is XRP going to be used to bail out the biggest banks in the world as we see the banking you know, crisis continue, as we see the banking system consolidate? Who is going to be left standing and how much XRP are they going to be holding? You guys let me know down below. And on the way out, if you guys could do me a big favor and smash that thumbs up, make sure you've subscribed, hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys on the next one. And oh, by the way, we have a special announcement. Um... We are going to be having a special guest coming up. I'm going to be dropping the announcement tomorrow. Special guest coming up for our Twitter space this coming Sunday. So make sure you guys tune in over there on Twitter. I, I, it's, at some point, I'm going to get used to calling it the x.com platform. Uh, but make sure you guys head on over to x. Make sure you guys follow me over there. And make sure you mark your calendars for Sunday space, which is going to be at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I got a special guest. You guys aren't going to want to miss this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. God bless you all.